Sam here from Sheridan Computers, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect Mulvad VPN to OpenSense. This video is not sponsored, but it was requested by one of my YouTube viewers, and I like to please if I can. So we're going to walk through how to configure the WireGuard instances on OpenSense, create an interface and a gateway so we can route traffic. We'll also create an alias list so we can send specific traffic over Mulvad VPN. If this is what you've been waiting for, this video's for you. Sheridan Computers. IT. Communications. Support. We are on OpenSense 25.7.9, which is the latest version as of today, which is the 9th of December 2025. To set up Mulvard, we're going to go to VPM, WireGuard, and then Instances. And here we need to create our first instance. So we're going to click this plus here to add a new instance. Give it a name. I'm just going to call it Mulvad. And then we have this public and private key. We're going to generate a new key pair by clicking on this icon here. And then we need this private key. I'm going to copy that private key. We're going to head over to Mulvad. Log in. Go to WireGuard configuration. Now we can generate a key or we can enter a new private one. We've already generated it, so we're just going to... Click Import Key. As we do that, you'll see this WireGuard key that has appeared here. So you can verify this has worked. So the end of mine is KY equals. And if I go into OpenSense and I look at the public key, it's basically the same key. So what I want to do now is select a country, select a city, and select a server. So I'm just going to choose the default ones. I'm not going to configure any content blocking or anything like that. If you want to do that, go ahead. I'm going to save that. So this is basically what we have just created. Now, this interface section here, is basically our instance configuration in OpenSense. And this peer section is how we're going to configure the peers within OpenSense. So what do we need? Well, we need the listen port. So set that to 51820 by default. I'm going to put it on 21. I'm not sure if there's anything listening on that. We need the tunnel address. The tunnel address is, uh, is the IP address of your interface or instance, which is this here. So we're going to copy that. And paste that. We can leave depend on carp. We can leave peers. Now this disable routes. This is important. We want to have this disabled because we want to specify the routing ourselves. So once we've done that, click save and apply. Once we've done that, it's time to set up the pair. So head over to Peers. Click the plus to add new pair. Give it a name. So I'm just going to call it Mulvad again. And we need the public key, which was in our configuration file. So now, as I said, we're referring to this part down here, the pair, which is in the pair configuration section. So we're going to copy that. And we're going to paste it into there. Allowed IPs. This is IP addresses that are allowed to connect. So we're going to go all of them, 0.0.0.0 forward slash zero. We also need the Mulvad endpoint address, and we can copy that from our configuration as well. Which is this here, and copy the port. It should be 51820 unless you've changed it. So we're going to copy that. I'm going to paste the port in. Now the instances, we need to make sure that we selected our Mulvad instance that we created. So tick that. Keep alive. If you want the tunnel to stay alive, you can set this to 60, some, to 60 seconds, for example. Hit save. Apply that. And now if we enable a WireGuard configuration, and then we'll look at status. Okay. The important parts are, this is green. Obviously, we've got the configuration details that we entered. This handshake age is important. So it's showing three seconds. It shows 
nothing or it's never had a handshake, we've got a problem. But we can see we've sent 180 bytes and we've received 92. So these actually need to show proper values and not just zero or blank. Once we have WireGuard set up and establishing a connection, we need to go ahead and create an interface to allow us to do routing. So we're going to go to Interfaces, Assignments. We can see that we've got this Mulvad one here. And I'm just going to call this Mulvad. And it's basically what will appear here. So I'm just going to call this Mulvad VPN. Add that. Don't remember to, don't forget to click Save. Go into Mulvad VPN. Make sure the interface is enabled. Don't bother with block private networks. We just need to go ahead and hit save. Apply those changes. So once we've got the interface set up, we need to go ahead and set up the gateway. So we've got to system, gateways, configuration. We want to add a new gateway. And I'm just going to call this Mulvad Gateway. The interface needs to be set to what we call our Mulvad, so Mulvad VPN. The IP address, again, we can get from our configuration. And this DNS server will do us as the gateway as well. And then hit save. And apply. So we've set up WireGuard. We've set up our interface and we've set up our gateway. So next we need to make sure that NAT rules are set correctly. So we need to go to firewall, NAT, outbound, and then by default, it's set to automatic outbound NAT rule generation. And because we're handling the routing ourselves, we want to change this to hybrid, hit apply changes, Save, apply, whatever you need to do. So we're on hybrid outbound NAT. So now what we need to do is create some aliases. So I'm not sending everything out over Mulvad. I'm literally just sending out specific hosts. So you can set your LAN or whatever you want. But what I'm going to do is create an alias. I'm going to add a new one. And I'm going to call this Mulvad, when I can spell it properly, Mulvad Hosts. Leave it set to hosts. Content, I'm going to set this to the IP address of one of my machines. So 192.168.168.100. Mulvad hosts. And click save. So what we did there, we created this Mulvad hosts and we can basically add aliases or IP addresses in of machines that we want to automatically go through Mulvad. So now we've done that, we can go ahead and go back into NAT. Should have done this the other way around. We want to create a NAT rule for that. So the interface is going to be Mulvad VPN interface, IPv4, protocol any, source address, and I'm going to set that to Mulvad hosts. So we're only allowing hosts that are in our Mulvad hosts alias to be for network translation to go out over Mulvad. So do that. Translation target interface address. That's fine. Give it a description. I'm just going to call this hosts to go out via Mulvad. And click save. Apply that. So just for clarification, the interface is the Mulvad interface that we created. The source is our alias lists because that's all that we want to go over Mulvad. And then the rest of it's pretty much default. So now what we can do is go into firewall, oops, rules, floating. So we're going to create a new floating rule. Pass interfaces. This I'm going to leave unselected because I actually want it to apply to multiple interfaces. So by not selecting this, we can apply it to all interfaces. We're allowing the traffic in, IPv version 4. The source, I'm going to set this to Mulvad hosts. Give it a description, so root 
Mulvard hosts via Mulvard Gateway. And this gateway option here, you'll recall that we created the Mulvad gateway earlier, and we need to select that here. Then click Save, Apply Changes. So what this does is ensures that hosts that are on a Mulvad hosts alias are forced through Mulvad gateway. And just to uh, make 100% sure that no traffic goes out of the one, I'm going to go into the one, click plus. I'm going to select this rule to block. Again, direction in, source. We're going to set this to Mulvad hosts again. For description, block traffic from Mulvad hosts out via one. And click save, apply. All we're doing here is ensuring that any hosts that are on this list is basically blocked from sending out via the one. I don't want our traffic that's destined to go out via the Mulvad VPN. I don't want it to go out of our normal one. And this is just making sure that that kill switch does 100% work. So now it says using Mulvad VPN, no DNS leaks, no web RTC leaks. And just to test that this is working and why I created that one rule to block. Um, VPN, WireGuard. I'm just going to click instances. I'm just going to disable WireGuard. And what this should have done was block internet traffic completely. And there we go, it's blocked. So adding the uh, block rule on the one was pretty much a kill switch. Let's enable that again. So open sense, enable WireGuard. WireGuard comes up very quickly if we look at the status. It's already up, handshake one second ago. And again, the same sent and received bytes. I go back to my host, refresh this. And we're now fully working. This video is the result of a comment on YouTube. If you found this video useful too, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see more videos on firewalls and networking. Hit that notifications button and you'll get notified of any videos as I do them. As always, if you'd like to hire us, head over to SheridanComputers.com. If you're still with me at this point, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.